Nat Fyfe, how are you, man? I'm good, Jill. Thanks for having me, mate. Mate, this is a long time in the making. I think you came to me... I did. ...season one. Yep. And I don't usually do season one. Yeah. <laughs> And she's having you gone on to deliver since then. Well, it's a it's a good one, mate. You've kept me uh, treated me and keeping keen is basically what we've we've worked out. I'm honoured to to finally land at the big dog in in Perth as well. So first pot in Perth with the Prince. No, thanks um, thanks for coming across to WA. Sometimes it can feel like we get a little bit forgotten over here. We're pretty isolated. But Not at all. Nice to have you in town, mate. It's been honestly the best couple of days, as you can tell. I've been chatting to half of Perth while we've been here. We went to. See Paradisa. Oh, uh, yeah. Have you been there? I haven't. Okay. <laughs> it's very nice. We went to Daisy's. Yes, in, in Cottesloe. That's, had the acai bowls. That's, yeah, it's very close to where I live. Yeah. We had, uh, we went to the Cottesloe Hotel the other night. Can't miss. And yeah, like nothing's missed. It's been unbelievable. We've been staying in City Beach. That beach there is up there with one of the best I've and been to. And you would have got a decent weekend of weather. Incredible. Like, because people talk about the Frio Doctor. Yeah. I hadn't heard of that before we got here, but it, we it was yeah we didn't see him. He didn't turn no, up for you. Well, no. I mean the kite surfers, windsurfers love him when he comes in after yeah. lunch. But you can you explain have... to the people maybe that aren't from Perth what that is? So like the wind just changes here, does it? Pretty much because yeah. it's really hot over the land during the day. Um, sort of that inversion layer. That's probably a bit technical. Mm. The afternoon breeze comes in from the southwest and just cools down sort of like all of the steaming hot land. And it's sort of five days out of seven during the summer. Yeah. Um, so fairly consistent. Are you, a, are you a kite surfer? Was. I've yeah. just sold my kite gear. Dude. Okay. That, that trip ended, but it was a really fun eight or nine years of kiting. Why was it like, have you just injury wise or body wise, you don't want to do it anymore? Or is it just new passion? I don't know. Life? You just, with passions, they come and go. You go on that journey. I kind of, as a young man, wanted to do everything fly helicopters, um, skate, surf, kite surf, anything I could get my hands on, I wanted to do. But as I've gotten a little bit older, um, that's shifting. Some of those things that I was loving doing in my 20s are no longer doing it for me. So, Man, it's crazy like sitting here with you today because it's a, it's a really funny one for me, very nostalgic. And like it's, I didn't probably think about it as much until we got you on the pod and you sort of start thinking about what we're going to talk about. And for me, you're a few years older than me, but you know when you're like 16 and anyone that's like older than you in that 17, 18 is just like, they're just like heroes. Mm. And the first time I sort of heard of you, I actually went to a Vic Metro WA game. And it was like the last year that I think it was like 16, 17 year olds could get picked up. Mm-hmm. Was that in your draft? Was that the rule? Like you were a bit um, born later in the year, it right? It was September, yeah. But it was like the 60, I think it was like Jack Watts, um, all those players in your team. You had like Nat Nui. I was the next year. You, but you were in that team no, though, wasn't you? No, no, I wasn't. Who was in your team, Yaron? Morabito. Morabito, no, yes, this yeah. is it. Morabito. Um, Mitch Duncan, Trev Collier, um, Kane Lucas. Yep. So, sure. Um, yeah, Mark Hutchings. We had a Nick Winmar. We had an amazing. Yeah. I think we won the cup that year. You too. did. And you're playing like, you know, that forward role. Anyway, you ended up going to pick it up because at that time you were super skinny. I was skinny. I was like, man, if I can be like this guy, <laughs> this is going to be sick. Look, things transpired. You end up putting on a bit of weight and mm. um, becoming one of the game's best players. But like, that sort of birth into footy from WA, being the number 19, tall forward in transition to like the midfield, changing of numbers. Like I've got this thing with numbers mm. and when you change numbers, it sort of changes the way you can play and, and be. What was that sort of like for you at that time? So I felt a strong level of imposter syndrome for the first maybe three years of my career mm. in terms of... Um, I just saw myself as this skinny kid from the country, but I knew where I wanted to go. And, um, and so I was just sort of hunting around trying to pick up confidence from anything I could. And so state level didn't feel like I belonged there, but sort of scrapped my way through, got onto a list. Didn't really feel like I belonged there, but, um, through training and a couple of games started to scrap together a little bit of confidence that just compounds from there. And, um, and then I was number 13 and skinny, really skinny, and seven became available. And I, I think we spoke off air briefly about manifesting. Like I always knew I wanted to be number seven and have a long, successful AFL career. And I just had no idea how that was going to happen or how I was going to get there or what I needed to do. But I had the vision. And so changing to number seven was a part of that. How did that so transpire? So it was one year in the thirteen. One year, just one year in the 13. Yeah. Dean Solomon was number seven. Yeah. He... Um, he retired 
and it became available in the off season and I just went bang doors down and said I just need to be in that number crazy um being from Perth as well like and then that sort of period like young draft picks like you see it now with like Harley Reid what's happening mm. and it's such a it's sort of like a small country town in a state <laughs> over here how hard's it been or how hard's it been or have you used it to your advantage you think of playing in a big team in a small state yeah the, the two team town thing is something you have to get your head around and I've never played in Melbourne yeah. so I don't really know what that's like you played up with the Giants it's a little bit quieter up there mm-hmm. I mean Adelaide is the two team town situation where um, it's it's um, boom or bust it's it's always you're going to win the flag or you're going to win the spoon it's sort of the the polarity which is what creates the cycle of hype and in the last maybe five or six years um, that's magnified incredibly as we've gone towards more um, click per view advertising cycle mm. they want stuff that's going to generate any sort of emotion um, and you can get caught up in it quite easily as particularly as a young player coming through you you get told not to read anything not to um, not to go searching for anything but it finds you because it's everywhere um, and anytime you do press conferences or you speak to the media um, they are looking for something that they can use to be able to create some sort of excitement or some sort of a thread that they can pull. So um, I was lucky in that I had great role models mm. in Pavlich, McFarlane, Mundy, Sanderlands, these guys that were just stoics. They just didn't really have any interest in what was going outside of them, what was happening in Melbourne um, in terms of media, and they would just focus on their preparation. They would come in, do their job was never as good, never as bad, just not ride the wave um, and just built really good careers. Before we get into talk, talk about footy today, and again, those role models have, have been huge, obviously, for you. But one thing that's sort of been sick to sort of see on the outside, like I love footy and, and I, I love the I love the industry and I think it's awesome, but I'm also really big on guys and girls at play, like mm. discovering who they are outside of the game. Mm. And obviously, incredible career. With, with everything that's sort of happened and is going to happen for you. But I feel like the last couple of years has been sick to see you, like, obviously on social media, like, you're travelling the world, doing different shit. Like, you've obviously got a real deep thinker. Things have sort of, like, been doing awesome stuff around. Like, I saw you went on a holiday with, like, Howie, mm. Nicaragua, like, India. Where's all this? Has this been something that's been, like, a consistency for you from a young bloke? Or has it sort of, like, happened over time a bit of both I mean we're all searching for something we're all trying to figure out who we are to some degree Um, and becoming sort of a famous AFL player answered a lot of the questions I had Mm. but it also has asked even more and so part of the travel for me is a search it's looking for meaning it's looking for um, for what else is out there to sort of broaden my scope to get perspective to sort of get out outside of myself um, and connect back in with um, um, with different culture, different ways of thinking, because this landscape that we're in here, um, it becomes very small very quickly. Mm. It becomes all about you and your preparation, what you're doing well or poorly, and your whole identity is wrapped up in that, and that can become quite treacherous if things are going well or if things are going poorly. If you're measuring yourself against that, um, um, your particularly for me feeling of belonging or self-worth um, is really volatile because you're allowing the external elements of your lifestyle to um, I guess impede or impact on how you feel about yourself so that's what travel does for me it gets me out of this bubble it gets me away overseas I can disappear you start noticing people not noticing you like Perth's mm-hmm. a small place I've been playing for a while most people um, at some level will have recognised me somewhere. And so being able to disappear into another culture um, is my way of nourishing and just getting quiet inside and and, um, and just opening my perspective back up. I love what you said at the start there about like the more you know, the more you realise you don't know. And I've found that more than ever this year, like personally just on my own sort of trajectory around. Like I obviously have not had anywhere near as career as you, but because of sort of the podcast and that sort of changing my life you expect all these things to just change for you be happier all these bits and pieces but i found that like even personally it's probably 
I look back at when I was playing footy in Sydney on a rookie wage, struggling to like live in, <laughs> live in um, our house, it's like the happiest I've ever been. Mm, yeah. And whilst now I'm still the happiest I've ever been, it's probably the hardest it's ever been. Mm. So it's almost like the more you develop, the more you go through, the more you actually achieve, the more fucked everything actually gets because you're like trying to maintain and realize so many other bits and pieces. Yeah, and that's the false lead. It's that you were looking for something and trying to get somewhere to unlock a feeling inside. Mm. Um, and most of those destinations, you get there and they're not what they needed to be. But the journey to that point is so critical. And so I had this moment when I um, <clears throat> I won the first brown light and I had three months of just euphoria. Just everything made sense to me. All the decisions I'd made in my life up until that point were perfect, exactly as they should have been because they revealed this space of bliss for me. Um, the problem with that was I wanted it again. And as sort of 16, 17, 18 um, took off, I was just searching for that feeling again. And I knew a premiership or potentially another brown line would be able to unlock that. And I got there again and it just felt so different. Mm -hmm. um, it was nice and lovely, but it just was not the same feeling as it was previously. And that kind of shook me to pieces a bit because I thought, all right, I've been hunting for this feeling. I've got to the place that I thought was going to give me that. It hasn't. Now where do I go? Um, and they sort of say that success without fulfillment is the ultimate failure. Um, and, and I didn't feel like I'd fail, but I just felt like I needed to look elsewhere. And so that sort of transpired into what the last four or five years has been for me um i've had injuries of my body um some stuff outside of footy which has really sort of shaken up my belief system um we sort of dealt with a COVID situation uh, we had a change of coach uh, there's a bunch of different things which all of a sudden everything felt in flux mm. um but just an amazing learning environment to try and figure out what's real and what you're building yourself off um, and start to detach from a bunch of those things that I thought were really important through my 20s. Oh, man, it's, yeah, it's eerily, like, again, I obviously, if sort of from an outside perspective, understand, not understand, I'm aware of those situations for you personally, but it's sick sort of hearing that from you. And this is the reason I love doing pods, right? Like you chat to people that you think... Um, just don't experience things that other people might and as you're saying that i've never really spoke about this either but i remember last year like me and my wife were trying to have a baby mm -hmm. got this business everything's like externally in the best place i've ever been like ever but just crashed like it started to experience panic attacks all these bits and pieces where i was like why the fuck is this happening now mm -hmm. and it's like a really similar journey in the sense that you're always like going for the destination and when you get it that's when I was there so my last sort of 12 months has been being so aware that this is the fun part like this is the fun part now in terms of me like we talked about this earlier like when i hit you up in season one and we're here now the fun part's been in the middle mm. like of getting to this pod so i'm like fully aware that the journey it's such a cringe saying, but the journey actually is more important well, than the I destination. Mean, you sort of said about the panic attack. You can't be like phony happy. Yeah. You can't like be like, this is the best part. I love the journey. Because mm. um, that's sort of fake. You know that. But the panic attack stuff is interesting because you've got no control over that. It's subconscious. It comes from inside. And having dealt with a bit of that the last couple of years myself and still dealing with it. Yeah. Where the body's like literally attacking itself. It's pumping out all of these hormones into your system where you just, you just can't really operate at the level you did earlier in your life and career where, um, and once you start seeing that and you get exposed to that you, you know you know that there's that scary place out there or within your own body where it could just start attacking itself at yeah. any moment and that's been the fascinating part about trying to get back to playing high level footy for me is that it's different to when I was um, 20, 21, 22 is that my, my body is now reacting to stuff that is much deeper than my conscious thought it's mm. down in here it's saying you are in um, you're in a vulnerable place. I'm trying to protect you. I don't want you to do that thing. And so trying to override that has been really difficult. And where my worlds collide is, and we spoke like the spiritual path, trying to understand who you are and sort of soften and deepen into compassion is very different to being a hardcore AFL player. Yeah. And you've got to be turbo mode with your preparation and your sense of self and your confidence and all those things. And I find that those pull in different directions for me. You know, I need to be... Um, a bit off my head to play footy at the level I need to, a bit of a turbo, but the journey that I 
the rest of my life is going on is the opposite direction. Yeah. It's sort of softening, it's understanding, it's getting away from ego, all those elements. So um, so the vehicle is whatever your curriculum is, which for me is footy, for you, podcasts. But it's trying to, f- it's trying to walk that journey whilst all this stimulus is getting thrown at you um, and try and figure out your way through it all. Mm. I've, I've got to tell you about this book that I, I read that mm. like, helped me the most. It's called Dare. And it speaks about like what you're talking about before around the, the mental stuff around it lives within you and, and whatnot. And it changed my life in the sense of always trying to run away from things. And this is, it, DARE is like an acronym of D-A-R-E. And it's got like four steps to it. I don't want to try and do it at the moment, but I will give you the book. I'll send you the book. Please. It is unbelievable. Like, because it's all actually about, you've got to go into it mm. and you've got to like sit in your body. And any time now like that that's happened to me, it's, you've actually got to like go come at me let's go it's so fucking uncomfortable but it's been the best thing ever because i started having panic attacks about having panic attacks like it was <laughs> the weirdest fucking thing ever chases itself yeah. around it was fucking weird but i like because i've always been like scared of nothing yeah is sort of the the mantra courageous on field um is sort of the thing that I wanted to build my mm. brand around. And I dropped my head in a game early in my career against Adelaide and got shown by the coach. And then from then on, I was like, I'll never do that again. Um, and so you build all of these things in. And, but then when, and so I thought I was like getting close to being invincible. Nothing bothers me. Anything, any adversity, any struggle, any pain, I can just deal with that. No worries. But um, got to a point in my life where, as you're saying, the opposite starts happening where your body starts attacking itself. It's got all of these threat response mechanisms built in, which I've got no control over. I can, I can do as many um, like mantras or like um, pump up talks or whatever I need to do, and my body's still going, no way, mate, we are not going there. So, um, so I like that idea of sort of, oh, you've got to sit with it. You've got to take, a, take the risk, um, like the going through hell, keep going, like all those things. Uh, I mean, they're sage sayings because they work. They are, man. They are. You're, so obviously the, the physical and mental side, I'm super passionate about. I'm sensing you are as well around mm. that spirituality and those sort of things too. And we will talk about um, footy later, but I think that this is actually so much more important because like you've got to be a good you know human before you can do whatever else you want to do. Mm. Physically, spiritually, and, and mentally, where would you sort of, obviously the body stuff at the moment, or the last sort of few years, like how much did that impact you on the on the other two facets? Like, do they work in tandem all together? I'm still trying to figure out the answer to yeah. that. And as we said before, the more you know, the less you know. Yeah. Um, but I know that they're all critical. And so, <clears throat> I was always a good healer. I'd have had a lot of operations, and I'd heal pretty quick. Have you had? Over 25. Wow. Um. So that's a lot of trauma on the body, and. What I started to notice, I wasn't healing anymore. I had a shoulder operation and it didn't heal. The bone didn't um, mend to the other bone like it was supposed to. And so I had to go back and have that operation again. And when I had the second operation, I got an infection from it. And and this started to repeat itself. Um, Multiple soft tissues. I had plantar fasciitis, which then led to a broken foot. And so I'm going, what's what's happening? I'm not healing like I used to. And the easy answer is you're you're getting old, mate, Um, which is true. but for me, that was like, all right, here's a new game to try and figure out. Um, why is my internal system in a place where it's not dropping into rest and repair? Mm. And so I do what I do, just start reading everything I can, um, going as far and wide as I can with information to try and figure out what's going on. So this relationship, and you said it before, and your, your body sort of keeping the score, it knows the trauma that's happened to it, both physically and emotionally. Um, and so starting to understand how those things within my body are being stored in there so I can be as strong and fit as I think I uh, as, as I have previously been like in terms of raw metrics raw numbers but my body's just not harmonizing and syncing together and that's what I found last year when I was playing I was um, quite strong in the gym I could hit my numbers running but I just my body was not talking to itself and the messages from here were just not getting through to my system so they're all intrinsically linked and that where the sort of spirituality side comes into it is um is the understanding expectation understanding the spaces of sort of gratitude versus um needing something out of your your journey so Mm. 
Um, so that's kind of where I'm at with that. Where do you think that leaves you for obviously a big career still to come? Like, where do you think that leads you at the moment? Like, what are you, what are you feeling for, for this year? Like, do you put expectations on now or do you just sort of like let it feel it and just see what happens? I don't know. And each yeah. game reveals. I love that you're so honest about that. Man. Well, I mean, I, 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 I'm not trying to yeah hide anything, yeah. and this is where I get myself into trouble in podcasts because yeah. I do. I am candid, yeah. Um, because as I speak it out, I get to test it for truth and go, yeah. "Is this real? Is this what you actually believe?" So I've got another contract next year, yeah. But I'm playing playing the game at the moment with 21, 22, 23. Caleb Sarong, Hayden Young, uh, Matt Johnson, like Neil Erasmus, like giant. These guys are weapons, and I'm. I'm seeing elements of their hunger that I had when I was younger and my hunger now looks different. It looks not more or less, it's just different. And so I'm seeing that I have an important role to play as an evolved version of what I was. Mm. There's no need for me to go and do what they did or what they're doing at the moment um, or what I used to do. Um, So all those questions... um, are constantly sort of spinning around in my head in terms of or what does it look like? Do I play for five more years? Is this my last year? Um, and where I keep coming back to is just right here. What can I do this week to enjoy um, my preparation and get ready to play next week? And just don't think too much broader beyond that. Mm. Do you live, obviously, all the time you're trying to live in the present, mm. but do you reflect much on what you've done and what you've achieved? Like, I think... For me, from an outsider now, right? Like you're talking. I know you're not. You're being extremely candid, but like, you have incredible energy and ability to, to maintain doing what you've done before. Like you're you're obviously aware of that. Mm. Um, do you reflect on on what you've been able to achieve? Like, I don't think there's been a, a player be able to dominate the game like you have. Do you think you want like? Um, you- not really. Mm. We're forgetting machines. Yeah. So you just get a version of what actually happened in mm. your head. Um, and it's just not in any way motivating for yeah. looking forward. Like I am what I am now. Mm. And um, yeah, the you used to be great thing does nothing no, for I, you. I don't, definitely don't mean it like the used to be great. Like you are great is what I'm saying. Well, then Whatever this is, that is. Well, yeah. this, is where I'm, I, this is where I'm kind of learning to detach from that perfectionist yeah. and harsh on myself yeah. which like is the hardest thing for me to do is because unless where i've been is unless i'm playing really well mm. or um or, or at a level i'm happy with then i'm not happy and that's sort of that gap between expectation and what you're able to deliver and so life teaches you patience it teaches you um a bunch of things which is what i'm kind of in at the moment and and yeah, I want to just keep opening up to potentiality of what could I be? Yeah. Like what could what could the best version of what I've got now be? Um, and not worry about like mistakes or not going as well as I hope it would or not going as well as I want it to go right now. But how can I just keep cultivating that space of potentiality and just see where the story goes? Yeah, sick. Well, it's crazy at the moment even like obviously it's round one and it's early in the season, but to see what a young team can do when potentially a Victorian base is, not saying they can't do it, but like, who knows? Look at Brisbane now, two and zip at the start of the year. Well, the more I play, the more it just does not make just, it, any sense to I, me at all. I'm, you know, I'm not, I'm not surprised by this, but I've been doing this for a long time, and I think that when you do a pod, you can really get into an autopilot and just talk shit, and it's very easy for footballers because you talk the same things every day. Mm. But you're so right. Like it comes back to that thing: if you pretend you know what you're doing, you're lying. We win and lose, and we think that we take all the credit and all the blame for yeah. it, and it's just so just so inaccurate we take credit and blame for our preparation our intention um but there's just so much out of our control yes like we play brisbane and they kick the first three we didn't touch the ball mm. the first four i think we didn't touch it and then after that it switched the other way now that wasn't them deciding you know what we would just park the bus or us deciding all right we better get going the game just had other ideas. The audience, the supporters are as much a part of the creation and the art as what we were. And um, and the older I've gotten, the more I've realised that we're not really doing that much. You're playing before, you said before, a few names like Sarong, Brayshaw, mm. Hayden Young, guys that you're playing with. Uh, and also you've played in teams as well, like Lockie Neal, um, I won't say Tommy Sheridan, but like Mick Barlow. <laughs> Um, you know a lot of a lot of good players how do they compare like who you know 
over the journey have you been sort of impressed with and loved teammates the most? So younger players you want? Well, to anyone talk even about? like we speak about a really you know a mutual friend of ours that I'm sure a lot of us have incredible respect for, but someone like Matt DeBoer yeah. and, and those sort of characters. Well, the, I mean, there's the superstars, yeah. and you can uh, you can probably imagine what I would say about those guys. Yeah. But then there's players like Mazungu, Subin, DeBoer, Chris Main, um, Mick Barlow. Guys that just heart and soul and just wring every single ounce out of their opportunity mm. that they can. And they're the guys that you just love going to work with um, during the week and on the weekend is because they just have no room for someone telling them they're not good enough to be there. And you just love playing and being alongside those people because they're optimistic, they're positive, they're, um, they're willing to do anything they can for the team at the detriment of themselves. And... Th- <clears throat> those characteristics lead on to the sort of humans they are outside of footy and in their life. Isn't that, uh, you know, it's been a really cool thing for me and obviously you're still in the thick of it, but you know, when there's, there's athletes, right? And athletes business life, we've said this the last few weeks, it's, it's eerily similar how crazy footy life business is. Mm-hmm. It's not, it's, it's habits. Like the whole thing's habits. It's not about like sort of what happens and you can look at guys that you play with that are really good players, but you know, like how are they going to go out of the game in other facets of their life. And mm. you do look at someone like DeBoer where those habits translate post footy and guys that maybe are really talented guys that play the game on natural ability that aren't maybe there's not as hard working, but not as process driven mm. then leave. And it's sort of a bit harder. Yeah. And I think there's a genetics have a, has a lot to play. Mm. Like guys get into whatever it is that they're doing in their life and they've got they're hardwired for habits or for work ethic or for whatever it is. Um, and in the West we really we really value that. And it's funny, I've just been to India and they're culturally very different. Here we're we're going places, we're building empires, um, we're progressing in some way. <clears throat> and I think genetically has a fair bit to do, but I also have seen within sort of my lens of football clubs people can catch on to that learn to build good habits learn to be reliable have integrity to themselves and actually improve the quality of their performance and the quality of their life by learning how to fit into a jungle and an ecosystem in an effective way yeah well that was me like i had no fucking idea what i was doing <laughs> like half but not in a sense of like i was lazy i just didn't know what to do you don't know what you don't know like, you just don't know what you don't know and I think you can, you've got to, that's why you'll be able to make mistakes and do these things, but it is habits. Like if you think one thing's not going to go well, unless you change, mm. nothing else is going to well, work. Well, the problem at the start of the jungle is that you're trying to figure out how to get valued. Mm. Like, is it, um, is it what I wear? Is it what I say? Is it having the most friends? Is it, um, is it what I do on the weekend? Like all those things sort of, sort of roll into this social hierarchy of being valued and sense of self. Mm. And where you transcend that is you go, okay, what are the principles that are going to serve me beyond just this environment, mm. which is that integrity, that work ethic, um, reliability, loyalty, those long-standing principles that work whether things are going well or things are going poorly. And when people crack that code, they're away. What's three pieces of content or lifestyle or like books docos experiences that you've been through that you would recommend or think have had the biggest impact on you Ooh. tough on the spot question. it is tough on the spot, but know, it could be trips it could be a book that you've read could be okay. a, could be a fucking tiktok that you've seen okay hey don't underrate tiktok either like, i've had some I've had some good epiphanies on TikToks. Okay. Yeah. I, I don't actually know how to. So that's an. You'd have to download the app to get access to do you, it. You don't. No, do mate. I'm. I do like Instagram. Yeah. Poorly. Yeah. <laughs> I've got a, a girl that doesn't follow me. Yeah, actually. I was going to say it's very high level sort of content. Thank that's you. Good. Um, um, she'll love that, Shannon. Um, so okay, three things. Yeah. I usually don't do recommendations. Okay. Okay, but I will. We'll reverse recommend because yeah. <laughs> because you do, and they're in a different space, and they go that's. That's, yeah, for sure. No, but like to you. Let me give it a go. Um, early days in my career, Brett Kirk came along. He's yeah. my mentor. <clears throat> he started to unlock um, the beautiful pathway that is consciousness. Mm-hmm. And one of the ways that he did it was he gave me the book, The Peaceful Warrior, <clears throat> right? which is a really easy, short book. So there's one. And I read that every couple of years. Um, and it's... 
yeah, it's it's that sort of ego journey about detaching from self and understanding what's going on beyond you. Yeah. So that would be that would be one. <clears throat> um, trips wise, um, things that have had a big impact on me would be. This is really difficult. Most recently, I went to India, and it's, there's a recency to that. Mm-hmm. But that was able to really shift the way that I understood. Uh, my body and also understand culturally what they value so as i said here we're building empires we're all trying to do something um we're trying to get wealth status fame all these things in over there from what i saw and i was fairly ingrained in the community it's not like that it's family it's um um, raising your kids and then your kids walking your parents home as they get older it's sort of that transition um, spirituality, religion, all of those elements are far more important, seemingly, than um, than trying to get somewhere yourself. So that, there's probably two. Um, and then I've got a couple of books at the moment that I'm reading, mm. uh, which I'm loving, the Rick Rubin book, yep. Creative Fact, if you haven't read that one. that's a- I, I listened to the – I haven't read the book, but I listened to his pod on uh, with Huben. Yeah. Yeah, it was pretty, it was pretty cool. The, the point you made then around the family um, stuff's a real hit no for me. Like I've got a young boy now, he's nearly one. Mm. And it's been, you know, the best thing ever. But it nearly brings in a whole nother level of, you know, you don't know what you know till you know it type situation. And mm. I've been incredibly like lucky. Like this weekend's been so contrasting for me because like in one aspect, we've come over, sold out a show, did a collaboration, Unreal. brought mates over, have had the best time ever. Then there's that all the feeling of going like, well, fuck, like my wife and boy are at home. Like I really miss them, and it's like as much as it's cool to have a live show and be there, it's like I actually probably just rather be at home. <clears throat> and that's where the that's the pull, it's, right? Because they need you to be doing you yeah. and being expansive and creating and creating a movement for this community here and broader. But um, they also need you there and that's yeah. that was interesting to watch in sort of real time over in india is mm. because it doesn't mean don't do, do anything, it yeah you know, sit back and be lazy um and obviously th- there's different issues that arise culturally but it was just so stark the difference between mm. here where yeah we're, we're going places and doing things and they're they're having cups of tea five six times a day with 15 20 people in a gathering Present. house not like scrolling on instagram while they're talking well they still do a little bit of that they too. like instagram they do okay <laughs> well, that's doesn't make me feel like that then well the funniest one of the funniest things i saw over there was um you go past the slums yeah. they got like nothing but they'll have an antenna on top of their cardboard wood house that they've built and they'll have a tv in there and they're watching the cricket which is awesome because yeah. And they're happy as. Or like I went past a like a street vendor selling peanuts and I would <clears throat> go past her each day when I do my morning walk and I know she would sleep there overnight. She's got like the pile of peanuts and then she had the tap and pay sign sitting on top of the pile of peanuts. So the world's clear, like the new yeah. modern ways of creating wealth, generating with sort of just um, the old ways of selling and surviving. Yeah, and you sort of, when you first go and you get exposed to that, it's quite confronting. But I've been to a number of third world countries now and um, you start to lose that lens of judgment in your eyes and you just start to see it as this harmony all kind of working together. They get the same access to happiness and sadness and disappointment and hope and despair and all the elements that we get doing our thing um, that they get over there as well. And that's sort of relevant. That's the beautiful element is... And I was there for six weeks in India. About four weeks in, I started to want to upgrade and change things. Like yeah. if they just did that slightly better than... And I had to soften away from that and go, like, it's perfect exactly as it is. Mm. Um, there's no errors. How was that trip? Like, where, is, where did you go? What did you go for? So I um, have a business partner, Tim, who's from Adelaide. He's building high-performance carbon fiber mountain bikes in India. And so cost of labor and resources is fairly affordable over there. So he's been over there living for three and a half years. Um, just what are the bikes called? I- iterating. They're called Veli, V-E-L-I dot bike, if you want to look that up. Yeah. But we're in the in this sort of um, sort of iteration phase still, designing. We've got a couple of bikes in New Zealand, a couple here in Australia being test ridden. Hopefully we're going to have some in Europe by later in the year. But I just went over to spend some time with him and get an idea of the challenges that we're facing. It's startup business and so all the usual challenges of startup, plus it's in India. Um, 
so yeah it was fascinating this could be the, the this things i did not expect talking about today is <laughs> nat five has a business in india building mountain bikes yeah yeah so he's building it out of this factory and i went and slept on the floor with him for about 10 days yeah. and then stayed in the in the city for another two or three weeks and then we he's a really good surfer so then yeah. we went down to goa and got some waves for a couple of you're weeks you're a surfer yep you went with howie yeah what's like how did that come about howie and i did the, and you what's better howie or you yeah um T- tbc okay can we know. come back to <laughs> yeah, that yeah let me i'll let you reflect on that <laughs> he hit me up early for the for the pod and um He'd been around for a season or two at that point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Digging myself out. <laughs> so we did that. He seemed like a reasonable fella and we chatted about surfing. I was going to Costa Rica and he dropped me some mail. This is where you have to go. And um, he's, a, he's a big travel dude. Loves it and loves surfing too. Yeah. Loves humans, the whole piece. Good fella. His mail was dead accurate. Every place we went to and he suggested just nailed the trip. And so we stayed in contact a bit. And then I went to Nicaragua, which is just the country next door to Costa Rica. Same thing, gave me the mail and crushed it again. It sort of wrote me into some good waves and some good people and food. So then he said, right, earlier in the year last year, he said, I've got a surf trip, a spot available, you can. And I just sent a deposit. I didn't really know the dates or times or anything like that, but I was like, yeah, I'm down, let's do it. There's a million reasons why it won't actually come to life, but mm. let's just put some energy towards it. And so on the way back from India, I roped into West Sumatra with the boys and um, spent the week with Howie and, and um, a couple of other, his other mates, and yeah, had a great time. It's unreal, man. Mm. Favourite places? Travel. Mm. I've travelled Norway three times, surfed wow. up there, Northern Lights. Um, Is it like, this could be incredibly... No, I have a question. I actually know the answer. Darcy wanted to know though. Is it cold in the water at Norway? Is it like a is it like icy there or is it like a beach? Like above the Arctic Circle. Um Yeah, that's why Darcy I was gonna say before. It's like it's Yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's cold, mate. Yeah, it's yeah. cold, Darcy. Like, like probably zero to six degrees when yeah. we were there. Zero to six degrees, mate. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you should polar I, See, yeah. I actually told him that but he didn't believe so it. So you'd bring a wetsuit, Darcy, yeah. if you went up there. So that was cold. Cool. Norway. Good. Norway. <laughs> yeah. Good. So Central America, amazing. Yeah. Um, I haven't done much of, like I've done Europe. But I haven't done much of Eastern Europe. I went to Poland. I suppose that's, but I want to do Russia. I want to China, Tibet. All You're not that. going to the, you know, the like top 10 sort of travel destinations, are you? So you want to get off the beat well, track. My mate, Dougie. Yeah. Who's, everyone knows Dougie. Um, we've done about 25 countries together. Yeah. And early days, we went to New York, 20, what, we were 21. Yeah. And we, yeah, I got pissed as crickets. And then the next day, we we're like, let's go to the Statue of Liberty because that's what you do. Yep. And we got there hungover and we um, bought, well, went to get tickets and there was a queue to get tickets to see the Statue of Liberty. And we waited and waited and waited. And we looked over and there was a queue to get on the ferry to get over to see the Statue of Liberty. And both of those looked bit, about half an hour long at least. And we sort of looked over in the distance and we could see the Statue of Liberty and we both looked at each other and went well we've seen it done and from that moment on i've sort of just never done Mm. tourist destinations because of that reason you go and see the things that everyone else is lining up to see and you can just jump on google and see them anyway i always felt like when you go overseas and i've you know i've been lucky to do some really cool places too i've done south america europe states all the main you know sort of continents Mm. but it was crazy to like go and when you're there, you get in, you like land in the city, right? And you do like a walking tour. And I don't know what the sort of reference would be in Perth, but it's like I'm sort of walking around and checking out like the Flinders Street Station of Melbourne right now. Like yeah. I'm walking around like Federation Square, like, and then what Melbourneian or Victorian actually fucking does this? Yeah. So you're like, I've always it's, just like a contrast of like, I know I'm here, but like I know I'm not actually where people would go. Yeah. So the way that I've, got around that is like airbnb is an amazing resource yeah. but i will go and stay somewhere for a couple of weeks yeah. and Move go to the same places um cafes um restaurants bars beaches surf school, whatever it is <clears throat> and generally the host of the house as well and by a week in you've got a community of people and they will rope you into all the things so you you, stay with you don't get your own house so if it's an airbnb i'll stay at at my like it's my own place but generally it'll be hosted by and i'll check out who the host is 
and I'll see what they're, where they're from in the world and their credentials. And usually they're people that think the same way and they mm-hmm. want to have other travellers come. Generally a surf person or snowboard person. Yeah. Um, within a week, I've got a new mate, hang out with them. Uh, like Nicaragua, for example, stayed mm-hmm. with Tim and um, and his wife was from Peru, um, Cynthia, and she was... Um, and between the two of them, they kind of just plugged me into the whole community, was in the paddleball paddle racket or the racquetball championship and they went away for a week so i checked the guests into the house and <laughs> yeah you sort of just get to do the stuff that you're not just doing flinders street station king's park and yeah. statue of liberty yeah and surfing in norway yeah 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 hey what's what's the sort of next 12 months look like for you i know you're staying present at the moment but do you what do you do now like yeah <laughs> <laughs> do you but on that then do you still look at the future like do you still think about definitely yeah definitely but not so much that it spins me in circles and try and get to the end all right if i have a good year this year that'll be enough or if i have a good year then maybe that like because that there's no answers to that so as soon as i start drifting too far into the future or or reminiscing too far back it's a reminder for me to (laughs) just go back to right now Mm. and go and do your prep mate um so um in terms of what the next 12 months dishes up get through the season, um, building a connection with the players, building an understanding of what my body can do at this level and trying to get better each week because that's where happiness comes from, progress. So yeah. as long as next week I'm in a space where I feel like I can improve um, and be better than I was last week, that you unlock all the elements of sort of a meaningful journey there. So um, travel, I'll go back to India, see where all my cash is going in that um, bike business. I get a mountain bike. <clears throat> Valley dot bike. Yeah. Do you, you wouldn't ride bikes. Why do you assume that? Um, I'm very good at riding bikes. Okay. I used to do dirt jump bikes as a kid. You used to kind of scrap. Is that right? Mm. Mm, I had a red line. Yeah, that was shit. Okay. Yeah. I'll take that. <laughs> kind of scrap is where it's where, at. <laughs> um, so I'll keep you in mind. When, yeah, do We're that. starting to ship to like people that need, you know, you got a fair yeah. profile now. So Yeah, it's pretty big. It's pretty huge. So India, another, I think we've got another surf trip plan as well with the same crew yeah really yeah um you don't surf either i'm not a big surfer i i'm more of a paddler like i just by the time i get out the back i'm fucking exhausted yeah and then it's like <laughs> fuck and then the waves are like big and then you're like oh, i'm just gonna paddle back in right yeah but i i wish i got into surfing a bit more to be completely honest well i mean whilst you're in town it's a good place to do it it's pretty it's scary. beach is a bit scary here to be honest like they're beautiful but you don't want to go that too deep for the sharks and stuff there's no sharks here i would beg to differ from some reports mm. yeah that have happened recently um hey just a real enough question because i i'm just really curious about this did you ever think about leaving port adelaide port Ad- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. did you ever think about leaving from <laughs> who, who do you think you're talking to who do you got on your mind at the moment i was ollie wines <laughs> no, trav boke no west off um, oh, what a, when he went to the wing, Mate, how good was so that? Good. <clears throat> um, think about it all, all the time. That was really big news in Victoria. Like, yeah. yeah, was it Collingwood? St Kilda Saint was Kilda. the main one, but there was a Giants one too. Yeah. When was yeah. that? Mate, we, we would have played together Amazing. in the Nafal. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> um, like always consider everything. Yeah, is what I tend to do. Like test it out see how it feels yeah and even um in the last couple of years when i was starting to really struggle Mm. with everything that was going on but never got anywhere near actually wanting that timeline to come to life yeah um so and i'm not bringing this up to scare any female supporters or anything like that but you talk a lot about the travel and getting out of experiences and stuff like i think the best thing i ever did not that it was actually a choice it just sort of felt that way was like when I went to a different environment that it just changed my life. So, like, so sorry, and sorry, no, that, that's yeah. but that's the that was the one that always tempted me because yeah. I, I like to keep evolving, keep yeah. moving. I keep, would I, if I. So you know how you can look at those like those moments in your life and you think, where would I be if this didn't happen? Yeah, like that period of like leaving Carlton, being delisted, to then getting to the Giants. <clears> I always go back to that like wake up in a sweat, going fuck. If that didn't happen, yeah, right. Where would I? Have, where would I be? Okay. I mean, the dots all connect in hindsight, don't yeah. they? Um, <clears throat> so, but and that's one of the elements. So, there's part of me that's like long-term games, play long games, mm. um, sort of allow compounding to build good results, loyalty, all that. Sort of, of course, of, yeah. 
But then the other part is just keep evolving, put yourself into new spaces, shake things up. That allows you to keep sort of detaching from these set in your ways that you get. And I'm doing these kids clinics now at schools and I'm, they're saying, how long have you played for Fremantle? I'm like, 15 years. Wow. It's twice as old as you kids are, really. And so there's a part of me that goes, oh, um, it would have been interesting, but I, that's, that's as far as it goes. Yeah. Um, I, the club has been amazing for me built my whole identity i feel so connected to the Fremantle community um and always will um and yeah wouldn't change it for the world you don't strike me as someone that would stay in football but is that i know you don't we're not looking too far ahead but no idea mate yeah no idea um i genuinely i want to write yeah, yeah you want to do write. Like articles or books no uh, like like books yeah you know, are you just speaking to an author like you're doing one I've released one. I'm sure you've read it. Yeah. But, yeah, I'm sure you do. I'll have to pick that up as well as Dare. Please. I'll, I'll send both to you. Both of them. That'd yeah. be good. Um, but that's about it, really. Mm. I mean, I've seen some really uh, fascinating, um, interesting, intelligent, well-rounded people say, I don't want to have anything to do with footy. Go and then come back in. Like it yeah. draws you back in. I think you definitely got to go and do something different. Detach for yeah. a bit. Well, that's what I want to do. Like f- detach. Pr- I don't want to be living in Perth. I don't think I don't want to be living in WA. I want to go and detach and start doing something completely different and allow that. Um, there'll be some tough years within that, but do it mm. properly. Like allow the collapse down moment where you detach from all it's this an incredible that you've time, built, man. and then slowly start building back up again. Yeah, oh, mate, you'll be. Yeah, I know there's a long time left, but it's. I'm excited to see what you get up to in that next phase in in when having in five, ten years, ten years time. He's optimistic. No, I'm very <laughs> optimistic. Um, but it's. It's a bloody exciting time, and I think with the your sort of character and what you've been enlightened to and doing over the last sort of few years, you're setting yourself up for a really cool, fulfilled life. Mm. Like not just in footy, but whatever it is that you do. Yeah, and you spoke about earlier about starting the scrap again, like starting from the Mate, bottom again. You got to drop the ego and just fucking learn something new. I think there's there's real excitement about that, well, and there'll be tough days, but yeah. starting and just like building something from scratch when you were saying before about like at the airbnb and like you know helping people check in and mm. stuff like that's the shit where if you're in perth you're like i'm not doing this like not to get in your own head mm. but when i finished i went work, worked at 3aw just like answering the phones and someone asked me to like go get them go get the coffees and i was like do you realize you're speaking to a 41 game fucking <laughs> agent right now like have some respect but in my head i was like fucking get over it mate no one cares anymore yeah like, not that they did anyway, but like... <laughs> no, no, that's, yeah. the, that's that little dance that goes on up there where you're yeah. sort of like... It, it you're, the own, you're the main character of everyone's story. Yeah. Right? Like you're in the movie. Yeah. But it was a really... I think it's one of the best things ever. And, and I always refer to this, but like Chris Judd says, speak, spoke about ego once. He said like, ego gets a bad rap. Like, it's actually a good thing if you've done the work. Mm. So I think for me, it was about like, all right, ego is actually a really good thing if you've done the work to have the ego and and know when to use it too. Not like being an egotistical maniac, but like internally just know what you deserve. Mm. Yeah, I love that because I've seen both sides of it. On Mm. the way up where you've done the work, it's compounding. It makes sense. People want you to be that guy. Mm. But then it's when it starts getting away from you and your performances aren't working or whatever space you're operating in, all of a sudden you're starting to lose your power um, and then you have to as you said just get over yourself mate and start building something else up again mm. um and recognize the timing of things that's that's so important sometimes it's your time to lead sometimes it's your time to follow yeah sometimes it's your time to be like knocked down on the ground and learn from that experience and other times you'll be killing it and so recognize that everyone has to face that timing um and the quicker you can see it recognize it, accept it and then you get power back from it because you can work in that space again no, man, I really appreciate your time today, bro. You're an extremely busy man. Um, it was an honor to, to have you on the pod finally. Um, season, I reckon, seven. Mm, killed it, yeah, it took, took a while. And, uh, yeah, really, really blessed to get you on, bro. I appreciate it. Your openness, honesty. Can't wait to see what the next sort of 12 to 24. I don't know how many, what the next sort of mathematician of that is, but, like, whatever the time is, it's really cool to see what goes on. Thanks for having me, mate. Thanks, bro.